From paints to socks, toys to tools, Parkersburg Hardware and Garden Center has it all. Parkersburg Hardware and Garden Center voted the world's best small town hardware. 504 Highway 57 Parkersburg. Open 8 to 6 Monday through Friday. 8 to 5 on Saturdays and noon to 5 on Sundays. Pit Stop Auto Service and Detailing is your trusted vehicle care solution. AC, tires, brakes, routine maintenance, cleaning, detailing, and more. We'll keep your auto running right and looking sharp. Visit Dean, Gary, or Colton at 108 6th Street in Parkersburg. Pit Stop Auto Service and Detailing. Campbell Melma Insurance and Real Estate provides the service you expect. With over 50 years of experience, they are available to assist you with all your insurance and real estate needs. Campbell Melma Insurance and Real Estate is your local agent, helping protect what's important to you. The Applington Parkersburg Community School District would like to welcome you to tonight's live broadcast. We would like to take a moment to thank our season sponsor, Campbell Melama Insurance, and our postseason sponsors, Parkersburg Hardware, Pit Stop Auto Service and Detailing, Greenbelt Bank and Trust, and Parkersburg Tire and Alignment. These broadcasts would not be possible without them. Applington Parkersburg Schools promotes good sportsmanship in all athletic events. Please respect the players, coaches, other fans, and officials at tonight's ball game. Who's ready for some basketball? Now let's send it off to the voices of the Falcons, Jonathan Molinkle and Brian Boozman. Most all possessions here, depending on what defenses they're in. Um, and then speeding them up, I think. Driscoll, thanks so much for the time. Best of luck tonight, and we'll catch you after the game. Appreciate it. See you tonight. More pregame coverage is coming up next. All right, we'll actually uh, keep rolling with our pregame coverage right now. We're back live inside the AP gym. Let's meet the starting lineups. First of all, for the road team, South Winnesheet. Number four is a uh, five foot three junior guard, Carissa Wenthold. Number five is a five foot six junior guard, Allison Hageman. Number 10 is a five foot four senior guard, Aubrey Willie. Number 20, a five foot six sophomore guard slash forward, Ella Tice. And number 22 is a five foot six sophomore guard slash forward, Alyssa Holthouse. Justin Iser is the head coach of the South Winnesheek Warriors. And now for the home team, Applington Parkersburg. Number three is a five foot five junior guard, Quinlan Schultz. Number four is a five foot 11 junior forward, Peyton Kloster. Number five is a five foot six sophomore guard, Eva Walker. Number 22, a 5'10 senior forward, Kendall Ryard. And number 24, a 5'9 senior guard, Lexi Oswagen. Head coach of the Falcons is Brady Driscoll. We'll have our national anthem momentarily, then it'll be time for the opening tip-off. Appleton Parkersburg playing host to South Winnesheek, live inside the Appleton Parkersburg gym. All right. Sung by Jonah Carney. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. 
And the rocket's a red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Inside the Applington Parkersburg Gym, John Moenkel, Brian Boozman, happier with us tonight on 99 The Wave, on the Falcon Activities Network on YouTube, and on Falcon TV, on Dumont Telephone, Cable TV Channel 994. Ball is in the air, and the opening tip off is controlled by South Winnesheek. They're going to move it from left to right as we see it from our broadcast location courtside here inside the AP Gym. One more time, the starters for the Warriors, Wenthold Hageman. Willie, Tice, and Holthouse. Just underway here in this one. Up top of the key, here's Hageman. Holds onto it and throws a pass left side to Wenthold. And a steal in the lane by Lexi Oswig. And here come the Falcons in transition. Quinlan Schultz to the rack. Too strong off the backboard. And the rebound goes to South Winnesheek. So the Falcons get a takeaway, but not able to convert on the other end here on the game's first possession. And we got a 10 second call. So there's that full court pressure that we uh, talked about a little bit ago, uh, given the Warriors' trouble on their first, uh, uh, well, I guess their second trip down, down the floor, first time starting from the backcourt. Yep, Falcons in their patented 2-2-1 two, two, drop 3-2 defense. Lob pass to the elbow with Kendall Ryard, holds onto it, now turns around, takes free throw line jumper, and it goes down after hitting the back of the rim. Kendall Ryard puts the Falcons in front, Two to nothing. There's that full court pressure. South Wind looking to break it here. They lob it forward where it is caught uh, by Tice. Down to the wing left side, controlled by Holthouse. Just underway in this one. Two nothing is the applicants in Parkersburg lead. Beginning their postseason tonight as the number two seed here in 2A Region 2. Down to the wing right side. And it's going to be a travel called on South Wind's Hageman. Kind of ran into some defense, shuffled the feet a little bit, and that'll be another South Wind turnover, their second of the game. So Carissa Wenholt, John, for South Wind has 55 threes this year, and Coach yeah. Driscoll might have mentioned that would yeah, be a school did. record. That's a lot of threes for one season. Quinlan Schultz with a strong take to the basket. Strong take, couldn't quite get it to fall, but she was fouled on her way up, and uh, she will shoot free throws. So during, I'm just want to finish my thought is so on the defense the Falcons are really going to have to know where she's at you don't want to give a girl who's made 55 threes any open shots uh, but I'm sure they've talked enough to know who to identify for sure Quinlan Schultz hits the first free throw we'll get one more here for AP and the second free throw also good good nice stroke on that one good sign that Kendall hit her first shot and Quinlan made both free throws really good way to start you bet 4-0 is the AP lead. Working into the front court. Wenthold pops up a three right wing. Missed it off the rim. Rebound Tice in the lane. Goes back up with it. Couldn't get it to fall. Rebound Ryard. And here she's come the Falcons. She's got a nice shot. Yeah. So we're going to have to look out. Here comes Ryard down to the baseline. And fouled on her way up to the rack. She tried to scoop that thing up there. And Kendall will go to the free throw line. Meanwhile, Lexi Oswegen leads the Falcons in made three-pointers with 28 on the year. So that uh, tells you something about Chris Wenthold, mm -hmm. how she can shoot yes. it. <laughs> yes. First free throw, no good by Kendall Ryard. Hit everything and missed. 13 points per game to lead AP. Kendall Ryard here in her senior year. 
So I'm going to, something I'm going to check out is, well, she made it. So I was going to see if they were going to press out of a miss, which is sometimes hard to do, but she made the free throw. Then you're into your pressure. South wind into the front court. They've yet to score. Six minutes to go in the first quarter. Travel. And they travel. So I think the, uh, I think South wind, putting a substitute in, I think the pressure that Appleton Parkersburg is applying is really, really hard on South wind. Well, and they, I mean, let's just be real. They don't see, uh, you know, the type of teams that, you know, like AP or the teams that AP, you know, typically plays all season long. They're kind of, as we mentioned a little bit, out on an island up in that region. Shot is missed by the Falcons. And the rebound pulled down by Southwind. Wendell heaves that thing into the front court where it's caught by a teammate. Tried to scoop up a shot, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by Oswagen. And it's going to stay with South Winnesheek. Loletta Ryan into the game for the Warriors. They inbound into the corner with Wendell. Bring it up top of the key. Here's Holthouse. Back out here comes a three ball wing right side. Missed off the rim, offensive board, and a foul on the putback. And Holthouse is going to shoot free throws, see if she can get Southwind's first points of the game. Holthouse, really good athlete. Did you see her get, she got up for that rebound, yeah. John. So, yeah. and we talked about it off, off, off air. Falcons need to box out a person and not an area to not mm -hmm. give the other team second chance points. If you're going to make a run going down to the state tournament, John, it's little things like boxing out, making free throws, and not having turnovers. That's all right. Winner of this one will take on the winner of Hudson at Jessup tonight. Let's see if we can get some updates. That was several dribbles after or before that free throw. A second free throw missed. Goes one for two on that trip, and it's 5-1 AP. Into the front court comes Quinlan Schultz. Throws an underhand pass back out to Closter. Now Walker takes to the free throw line and left to Ryer. Nice screen set up top by Walker. Now it's Q, lobs it down toward the paint. Here's Closter, too strong off the backboard. Rebound South Winnishy. South wins in a man-to-man -man defense, which should allow itself the opportunity for Peyton Closter to get a lot of looks in the paint tonight. Here's a steal in the backcourt by Peyton Closter. They got a tip at half court, but the Falcons turn it over. Oswegen tried to chase down along the sideline. Loose ball, and they just lost control of it, so AP turns it over. Pre-game jitters for both teams, John. South Winnesheek coming in here out of the Upper Iowa Conference. And they get it across the half court here with Tice. Down to the left side, Wentold fires up a three. Oh, it rattled out. Rebound goes to Ryer. Falcons wearing their home white jerseys with red numbers and text, red stripes. South Winnesheek wearing their road red jerseys. Here's Peyton closer, long two right side. No, hit everything. Rebound Walker in the lane, throws it out to the corner, and the Falcons reset the offense. Lob up for Closter. Turnaround shot. Good that time. Peyton Closter extends the lead to 7-1 to one over South Wind. Nice job of finding Peyton in the paint. We got I think we need to continue to go down into the paint. Scramble for the ball near half court. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow to AP and a chance to really open this thing up here. 7-1 to one as we approach the halfway point of this first quarter. And Falcons. here comes Schultz. Falcons are going to run a set here. Should get a nice easy shot with Kendall down on the block. She's heading down that direction. Oswegen instead shoots a wing three left and she airballs it. And Southwind lets it bounce out of bounds. Walker could not save it. And AP will give it back to the Warriors here with 3.50 to go in the first quarter. Went hold the leading score for Southwind, 11 points per game. Oh, and they do get it inbounds. Here's Walker, and so. Nice take by Eva, yep. go ahead. So it's 9-1 AP here, 340 to go in the first quarter. Just one free throw. Here's a steal at half court by Oswagen. Down for Schultz, layup is good. And South Wind calls timeout. They can sense AP snatching the momentum right out of the gate. 30-second timeout here, 3.33 to go in the first quarter. Applington Parkersburg 11, South Winnesheek 1. Well up. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union encourages positive behavior. Pride, respect, leadership, and sportsmanship on the court and in the stands. Remember what a great privilege it is to see your team compete. Thank you for your attendance. Enjoy the game. And enjoy the game.
out all year, we're going to put three or four more kids in here, and the, there isn't going to be much of a drop off. Mm -hmm. But what happens is the pressure discontinues, and over time, it just wears on you both mentally and physically, mm -hmm. and you, you just aren't able to get good good looks. Wentold throws it left. They're trying to get it across half court here, and they do with a couple seconds to spare. Here's a steal by Ryard in the backcourt. Forward for Quinlan Schultz gets an easy layup at the other end. 13 to 1 AP, all Falcons here in the first quarter. South wins 7 and 15 on the season. Six regular season wins, one postseason win. It was an overtime win at Wapsie Valley on Saturday night. Down to the corner, here is Holthouse. Looks to throw a pass and gets it up to the wing left side here with Willie. She drives down, has her shot knocked away by Oswegen. Here comes uh, Schultz into the front court. Oh, and she gets knocked toward the wall. And she's going to be all right. That was a that was a shot. That was a that, foul. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wow. That would look like 1980s NBA basketball where <laughs> you're not getting the shot off. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, um, you know, all jokes aside, though, if if the wall would have been three feet closer like it is in some gyms, it, it could have been an interesting fall. Right. Yeah. So Boozman, Wolf, and Wangsness into the game. Ryard misses a three. Boozman rebound, put back, yes. Bella Boozman puts AP in front by 14. Two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. And here's a loose ball picked up in the backcourt by Wolf. Almost got screened down along the baseline, but it's another takeaway for AP. Wolf finds Ryard in the wing left side. Up top to Boozman, now it's Walker. Great ball movement by the Falcons. Wangsness, oh, loose ball, she lost it. Ryard dives down to scramble for it. Jump ball is called, and South Wind has the possession arrow. It felt like a score on that possession would have been not Cat the dagger, obviously. Yes, yes. Catastrophic. Obviously not the dagger, but. No. So here's South Wind with the basketball, and they turn it over. Ooh. It, uh... The pass must have just been off target or miscommunication, something of that nature. Uh, I think what I couldn't I couldn't see the whole play, but I think she took her eyes off it as it was coming because she assumed somebody was going to be right there when she caught it. So Wangsness, handoff walker, terminates the dribble and back up top. Wangsness takes it in the paint. Up top. Ryard thought about the three. Instead, Boozman pops up a three. Too strong. Rebound Wangsness. Put back is in. Colby Wangsness. Nice. Everyone getting on the board. Six different Falcons have scored here in the first quarter. Nice rebound by Kobe. She's just in the right spot at the right time. Wenthold heaves up a three left wing. Rims out. Rebound Wangsness. She just can't buy one, can she? Not tonight, anyway. Here's Bella Boozman. And the wing right side. Lobs it up. Here's Wangsness. Takes one dribble. Turnaround shot missed. Gets her own board. In the lane now Walker. Turning around looking for a shot. And back out to Colby. Wolf chases down the loose Set ball. Set up a play. Yep. Tip back out to Walker. Oh, nice backdoor cut. Boozman missed the shot. Rebound, Ryard goes back up with it and is fouled. That was a nice play design right there by AP. Boozman not able to connect, but Ryard gets the board and is heading to the free throw line. A minute eight to go in the first quarter. AP 17, South win one. First free throw by Ryard is good. Happy you're with us tonight, however you're experiencing the broadcast, whether it be on 99 The Wave, RadioOnTheGo.com, the Radio On The Go app, on YouTube, on the Falcon Activities Network, or on local cable TV to Dumont Telephone Company subscribers on channel 994. Second free throw missed, rebound goes to South Wind. Charlotte Moonen into the game for the first time, so is Chloe Witgen. Sounds like a lot of ways you could listen or watch the game tonight, yeah, Jonathan. Yeah, no doubt about the option. No doubt about that. Here's a bounce down to Wenthold. Pops up along two. No good right corner. Rebound tapped around. It goes to Wolf, and here come the Falcons. Falcons doing a better job of rebounding. Emma, yep. coast to coast. Oh, she couldn't quite get it to fall. Wenthold will bring this into the front court for the Warriors. Runs into a double team with Wolf and Boozman. Near half court, they're getting trapped. Ava Walker in the game. Southwind able to get away from near that half court line. That was a dangerous spot. 
And Wangsness reached in, tries to get a jump ball, and she does. Falcon so, ball. Yeah, AP gets it back here with 21 seconds left in the quarter. Chance maybe to hold for the final shot and get 20 on the board maybe here before the end of the first. Looks like, I'm not sure if part of their team is in a press. The other, oh, it's full court man to man is what it looks like. Ah, okay. okay. So they'll settle back and play defense yep. here. Falcons 15 to, seconds. They just need to run their play here and get a diagonal screen. There's a diagonal screen for Kobe. Down to nine seconds. Lob it left to Boozman. She's got it up top. Underneath, here's Peterson. Along the baseline, four seconds left, and it's taken away by South Wind. Down on the baseline, and that's going to be it for the first quarter. Nevertheless, Applinson Parkersburg gets off to a strong start in this one. They lead it 18-1 to over South Winnesheek as we head to the second. The definition of sportsmanship is the quality of showing fairness. Respect and generosity towards the opposing team and officials. The things you say and do are a direct reflection of your school and community. Please stay positive and enjoy the game. And enjoy the game. Enjoy the game. Pit Stop Auto Service and Detailing is your trusted vehicle care solution. AC, tires, brakes, routine maintenance, cleaning, detailing, and more. We'll keep your auto running right and looking sharp. Visit Dean, Gary, or Colton at 108 6th Street in Parkersburg. Pit Stop Auto Service and Detailing. We're back inside the AP gym as we start the second quarter. Applin's Parkersburg 18, South Winnesheek 1. Oh, oh boy. Oh. That was a, and looked like she was just balancing on that like a wire, John. Right, right. One of the South Wind players had a near half court. That went, behind, that the be, it went behind the backboard. <laughs> I've never seen that before where they got, and they got the rebound. Yeah, here comes the three right corner. That one missed, rebound, it goes to Ryard. Loose ball on the floor. So how about this first quarter now? 18 to one, South Wind just had a free throw. The Falcons did not give up a field goal in that first quarter. No, and Falcons were eight for 17 from the field, John, and South Wind did not score a field goal. So good defense and really good offense. We're getting good shots. Quinlan Schultz, an aggressive drive right. Lobs it up here as Colster takes one dribble. Turnaround shot is good with the left hand. And as we mentioned earlier, just keep going to the well. You bet. It is 20 to one. Here's a loose ball picked up by Schultz, lays it in at the other side. I think we can say this one is getting a little out of hand. 22 to one is the Falcon lead. Down to the block, and it's a block by Kloster. It's picked back up by uh, South Window. Down to the block, here's Tice, fouled on her way up. An emphatic block by Peyton Kloster. But South Wind will head to the free throw line. A chance to get this one off the scoreboard. So you know it's hard as a coach if you're the, well, if you're the Falcon coach, if you're Brady Driscoll. If I had any advice for him at all right now, it would be to uh, every once in a while, just slow it down and, and run your offense and get used to having to run your offense, maybe run it once or twice to take time off the clock, but get used to those cuts, get used to the screens, because it's so easy to go up and down the court and score layups. Mm -hmm. But sometimes what you find is you develop bad habits against not so good teams that you aren't able to do it later. So you want to kind of work on things you normally can't. Use it as a practice. You bet. South Wind gets the offensive rebound after the missed free throw though. One hold fires it down right and back outside of Holt House. She takes it down to the baseline, guarded by Closter and backs it behind the three-point line. 12 on the shot clock. Line drive into uh then back out here to Holt House and a foul along the baseline here with Peyton Closter. Oof, I don't know how much time was on the shot clock. Couldn't have been a lot. It was under 10. Okay. Yep. And that'll be Peyton's first personal of the game. Second team foul for AP. Yeah, and that's kind of a theme that we've talked about all year. Just slow it down, run your offense, you know. Here's a steal by Ryard in the backcourt. Another south wind turnover. Down to Walker. Nice pass. Wide really open. nice Oswega. pass by Eva. And Wowza. she nails the three. 
Lexi Oswagon from downtown. It is 25 to two Falcons. So Lexi's defender got caught, which she did a nice job. She was on help side defense, but just couldn't recover in time. Here's another Seal layup. Oswagon, Schultz, Walker. Oh, she, oh, missed, she the missed it. Rebound tapped to South win. Pulled in by Tice. And a foul. Is that aggressive full court defense by AP? When the Schultz gets called for the reach, and that is her first personal foul. And if you're the South Wind coach, you're just asking, Coach, can you just back the press off the <laughs> <Right>. half court? <laughs> yeah, maybe in the second half, right? Can you just do me a favor? <laughs> and I didn't see the call. Was that double dribble? Uh, yes, ish. Ish. <laughs> All right. I, I think it was double dribble, yeah. All right, so AP gets it back. 5.45 to go here in the second quarter, leading 25 to two. Bob inside, here's Ryer, dribbles along the baseline. Oh, I think she tried throwing it off a defender, but South Wind gets the steal. Here's Wenhold, pops it up, way too strong, and it's out of bounds to AP. And again, South Wind still does not have a made field goal. Just two made free throws is it. Man, they cannot buy a bucket. Turnover by the Falcons. Quinlan slipped out of her hands. Eva wasn't able to get it. Bounce down to Holthouse. Oswegen trying to get in there. Picked up by the Warriors. A tip shot. Picked up by Kloster. And here comes AP. Boy, it's getting ragged out there, yeah. John. Ragged is right. You know, the other thing the Falcons don't want to happen is you don't want to get injured on a night like this when things are a little chaotic yeah. and it's not, it's not real con consistent. That was a kind of a chaotic stretch <laughs> right there. That's a good way to describe it. 5.05 to go in the second quarter. Walker has it up top, throws it behind here for Oswegen. Brings it back and lobs it up down to Kloster. Oh Pivots around she up top. missed Oswegen. Eva Walker on a backdoor cut. And Ryard had it knocked away from right in front of her. It was tipped by Tice. AP has three turnovers in as many possessions now. Oh, Southwind had a player wide open down to the block. It happened on both ends, and they, the player wasn't able to either see him or get it to him. Here's a bounce right. Tice down to the wing right side here with Wenthold. Runs into Kloster, heaves it to the left side of the, of the floor. Three ball is missed, and the rebound goes to AP. Here comes Schultz in transition. Bounce it left for Kloster. Up top, Walker. Now it's Kendall Ryard. Step back three ball. Yes! Kendall Ryard nails the tray. She's got 7 4 AP, and it's 28 2 Falcons. We approach the halfway point of the second quarter. AP well on their way to this quarterfinal round victory. We'll look for an update from the Jessup Hudson game. Three ball went hold, bouncing in the air. No tip back to Schultz. Bounce pass layup. Lexi. Two, two on one, Lexi Oswin. Perfect. You betcha. Great execution. And another timeout called by South Wind. Here with 3.42 to go in the second quarter. This one is a full timeout, so we will take it as well. 30 to 2 is the AP lead. 3.42 left until halftime. We know this is more than a farm. It's your home. It's where you inspire the next generation to help feed the world. And Greenbelt Bank and Trust is proud to support all levels of the ag process. We believe in forming personal relationships because we believe Iowa farmers are needed now more than ever. Visit GreenbeltBank.com and discover how we can help your operation reach the next level of financial success. Campbell Melema Insurance and Real Estate provides the service you expect. With over 50 years of experience, they are available to assist you with all your insurance and real estate needs. Campbell Melema Insurance and Real Estate is your local agent, helping protect what's important to you. Go till halftime. AP 30, South Winnishik 2. Happier with us. And a travel called on South Winnishik. Man, if you're a if, if you're, you're a, a sorry, well, go ahead. No, if you're a parent sitting over there, you you 
you just kind of want the clock to keep going just for your yeah. kid, right? Well, like, we're, we're getting there, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's 30 to 2. Can it happen in the first half, John? I don't believe so. Okay. We may have a chance to find out firsthand, though. It's 30 to 2 with three and a half minutes till halftime. So, and South wind just fouled. Yeah, I'd like to see the Falcons run an offense and get a good shot here. They get it in Wangsness right off the inbounds, pass up and in. Colby Wangsness gets her second bucket of the night. It is 32 to 2. South Winnesheek has not scored a field goal yet. The two points are from two made free throws. And Clement Schultz gets called for a foul. Seven different Falcon players have scored. Including bench players Colby Wangsness and Bella Boozman, including the and the, the starting five as well. 3.07 to go till halftime. Here comes South Wind. Bounce to the left of the paint. In the lane. Turnaround shot. Too strong off the backboard. Offensive rebound. And it's out of bounds to AP. Charlotte Moonen back into the game for the Warriors. And here comes Wolf looking over toward Coach Driscoll for the call here. And here's Boozman. Bounce up top to the free throw line with Peterson. To the wing right side. Here's the three ball. Eddie. Oh, yeah. Eddie Ava Eddie. Eddie. 35 to 2. You know, Boy, you good for the, her. You bet. You know, you mentioned the South Wind crowd. That's a credit to these folks that made the trip. That's not a short drive for a, a single game, you know. And it's going to be a foul here on Bella Boozman, her first of the game. Not a huge crowd, but certainly a faithful crowd that made the trip down from the towns of Calmer and Ashen. Calmer, Iowa. You bet. First free throw is missed at the line right now, Aubrey Willie. Good people in Northeast Iowa, John. Amen. Salt of the earth. Those people are hardworking, well-grounded people. You bet. One more free throw coming up. Some of the most scenic land you'll find in our state. Second free throw also missed. Tap to the corner. And another offensive rebound after a missed free throw. That's the second time that has happened uh, tonight so far by South Wind. Went holds got it deep near the midcourt logo. And gets to Willie up top. Terminates the dribble guarded by Boozman. Here's a steal by Wolf. Tipped by Boozman. Stolen by Wolf. Takes it down to the paint. Oh, Stokes Emma with a in. scoop. Nice. Emma Wolf with a scoop. I thought she was going to pass it, but she shot it. 37 to 2, Falcons. Here it's picked up by uh, Ava Eddy. Takes it to the bucket and puts it up and in. So now we got that already 35 point uh, margin here. And foul on Ava. And they did stop the clock for the foul, so must be the second half when that takes effect. Okay. 39 to 2. You know, and there's some goals that Falcons could set at, at halftime, John. Just as a point of reference, we could uh, maybe a goal would be we're not going to give many offensive rebounds. Right. We're going to try to deflect three passes. Just something to kind of keep you a little bit sharp and focused on something. Because if you're just going to go play to play, it's really hard when you're ahead 39 to 2 to focus on anything. Right. right? First free throw was missed. Second one by Willie is no good as well. This time the rebound goes to AP. So here comes Wolf across half of court. Minute 48 till halftime. Eddie has it up top. And finds Wolf up top once again. Screen set by Peterson. Around the perimeter, here comes Wangsness. Into the paint, back outside Eddie. Falcon is moving it around. Here's Eddie around her defender. Oh, couldn't quite get the floater shot to go. Offensive rebound, put back is in by Wangsness. She's got six, and it is 41 to 2. Wenthold looks at the bucket. Out to the wing left side. Willie faked the three, takes it to the elbow, and a tie-up. I think, yep, it's going to be a tie-up. Wolf reached in, forced the jump ball. Falcon and, ball. Yep, AP's got the possession arrow. Adele Conway checks in for the first time for South Win. Also back into the game, Ella Tice. Five on the floor for the Falcons right now. Boozman, Peterson, Eddie. Wolf and Wangsness. Boy, can we go an entire first half without AP giving up a field goal? We, we got a minute five left to, to find that We're out. running our offense, which is great. It takes time off the clock, and then you have to focus on something. Yep. 
Work on little skills, passing, cutting. Here comes a pass to Peterson, who's tipped by South Wind, and it'll stay with AP. 13 on the shot clock now, so good situational moment here for AP. In Olivia, late. Olivia Peterson's got some really good footwork in the post. I'd like to see them get her the ball down there and let her do some operating. Kobe Wangsness. By Wangsness. AP, I, dare I say they're doing whatever they want right now? It, I they mean, are. <laughs> I think they can throw it up, close their eyes, and see what happens. <laughs> All right, about a three second difference between the clocks. 30 seconds left in the half. Tip by Wolf, and it's out of bounds. Oh, they got a foul on that, actually. I so Emma Wolf gets called for her first. I think the Falcons are going to be successful, John, in allowing them to not score a field goal in the first half based on the time. 28.8 yep. left. First free throw is missed by Conway. One more coming up. 28 seconds left here in the first half. And the second free throw is also missed. Rebound goes to Wolf. Whoa. Scramble for the loose ball, and it's going to be a jump ball, so South Wind's going to get it now with 24 seconds left. Well, she looked like Curly Neal from the Harlem Globetrotters there trying to dribble, be uh, dribble backwards underneath their legs to get the ball. <laughs> Never seen that. It was awesome. And Emma was laughing. Yeah. All right, South Wind's got it here. 20 seconds left in the first half. Up top, here's Conway. Lobs it to the free throw line, and it's oh, almost stolen away. Bounce pass down to the block, and there's going to be a travel called on South Wind. Adrian Winings, another newcomer into the game, went down to the knees. So here, nine seconds left. See if the Falcons can get a shot here right before the end of the half. Here comes Wolf into the front court. Bounce it to Peterson. Down to three seconds. Hand off Wolf. Throws it up. And a travel is called with one, one tenth, tenth of a second left. Of a second. That <laughs> is really stellar clock keeping to be able yes. to stop it with one tenth. <laughs> but I don't think you could do that again if you tried. No. Well, that is it for the first half. The halftime score, Applinson Parkersburg, 43, South Winnesheek, 2. Yeah, that's a... Uh, I'm not misspeaking there. That's our score. Let's head to our halftime break. You're listening to Falcon Postseason Hoops. The score of any game is generally forgotten over time, but the actions of players, coaches, and fans are remembered. Sportsmanship is an attitude that can have a positive influence on everyone around you. In the stands and on the court. How do you want to be remembered? Support your team positively and enjoy the game. And enjoy the game. And enjoy the game. From paints to socks, toys to tools, Parkersburg Hardware and Garden Center has it all. Parkersburg Hardware and Garden Center voted the world's best small town hardware. 504 Highway 57 Parkersburg. Open 8 to 6 Monday through Friday. 8 to 5 on Saturdays and noon to 5 on Sundays. Tired of uneven tire wear and wonky steering? Draining your wallet at fancy dealerships? At Parkersburg Tire and Alignment, we get it. We're a family-owned business keeping your car safe and your wallet happy. We use the latest technology, not fancy price tags. Our expert mechanics get you back on the road fast with honest advice and budget-friendly options. New tires? We've got major brands at down-to-earth prices. Alignment off? Our precision machines get you rolling straight, saving you money on gas and tires. Skip the big guys. Parkersburg Tire and Alignment, where family values meet the latest tech all at prices that won't steer you wrong. Stop up or call and talk to Dave about your car needs at 1304 Highway 57 Parkersburg or 319-346-2000. We are more than just a tire store.
Sometimes I worry. Sometimes I'm scared. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed. Sometimes I cry. And that's okay, because sometimes is not all the time. It will be okay. You got this. You got this. You got this. Campbell Melema Insurance and Real Estate provides the service you expect. With over 50 years of experience, they are available to assist you with all your insurance and real estate needs. Campbell Melema Insurance and Real Estate is your local agent, helping protect what's important to you. I'm John Moenkel. Your radio home for Falcon Athletics all year long is 99 The Wave. Sail away with 99 The Wave. 989 FM. KQZR. Parkersburg. Iowa Falls and Hampton.
inside the AP gym. 43 to two, AP leads South Winnesheek. We do have a score update from Dyke as well. At the half, it's Dyke, New Hartford 54, Waterloo Columbus 19. So how about that uh, offensive first half for the Wolverines? 27 points each in both the first and second quarters. So uh, AP, if they were to advance to the regional final, would have a very likely matchup with Dyke, New Hartford at a location to be determined. And I told you I've got the recipe for Coach Driscoll if he wants to try to take the Wolverines, <laughs> at least make it formidable. Yep. Here comes Ryder, looks at the bucket. Deep. deep three, missed it wow. too strong. Was deep. And the rebound goes to South Winnesheek. I always wonder how people can even get it that get it there from that far. Right. But you gotta really put a lot of juice into it. She can do it. So South Wind did not have a field goal in the first half. Here's a steal by Oswag and takes it down the near sideline. One-on-one, Oswagen, sidestep, and it's an offensive foul. Well, that gives the South Wind fans a little something to cheer about. Yeah. They got to their feet on that one. So, looks like Coach is, I haven't figured out what his press is. We're, we're backing it off. We're just gonna drop into a, looks like we're going man, John. I haven't played man for quite a while, so yeah. we're gonna work on that a little bit. Be interested to see how our help side defense is because we don't practice it a lot. Wing three missed short. Rebound goes to Oswagon. That one missed by Willie, by the way. Into the front court. Here comes Schultz. Down to the block right side. And a blocking foul on South Win. Looks like he was in the act of shooting, so we should have. Yep, we'll have free throws coming up for Quinlan Schultz. She's got eight points so far for AP. Shoots 68.4% from the uh, from the line this year, John. Oh, missed the first one, though. I didn't help her out there, did I? I guess not. <laughs> Falcons as a team shooting 62%. Second one, also missed. Oh. Uh-oh. So here's South win with a rebound. And those red jerseys with checkered stripes down the sides. Conversely, uh, South win, John, is shooting 41% from the line. 41% from the line this year. Three ball went hold right wing. There yes. it is. A nice shot. We knew she had it yeah. in her just based on her statistics. And uh, so she got a nice shot, got it in. South wins first field goal of the game <laughs> comes with 631 left in the third quarter. Ryer tries to get the answer, couldn't get it though. Rebound goes to the Warriors in the back quarter with Wentel. You know, maybe you and you'd typically see the first shot goes down. Maybe South Wind starts to string a few more together. We'll see if the law of averages kind of play out here in the second half. Schultz heaves it inside. Really nice There's pass. Quinlan did a really nice job of running that break. And if you can get a post person, gal or male or female, to run down to the block, you're gonna and you get them open. It's two points every time. You bet. Down to the block, right side layup. Good and a foul call. So South Wind gets field goals here in the third quarter. And they've cut it to 45 to seven. Running clock rule will still be in effect until it gets under 25 points. And the Falcons are going five in, five out. Grinnell style basketball. That's right. Peterson, Wangsness, Wolf, Boozman, and Eddie. The five on the floor for AP. The free throw is good by Tice. And she's now got three, make it four points for the Warriors. 45-7 is the AP lead. Here's a tip and a steal in the backcourt. South wind layup at the other end. No good, but a foul called. So again, South wind has a chance to Keep on six to two. The they've score. outscored the yep. Falcons this quarter, John. Six to two. First free throw missed at the line right now. Alyssa Holthouse of the Warriors. South win, of course, looking to muster something out of the season here, or out of the the final game of the season. Second free throw missed. Rebound Wolves. Their previous low point total on the year was 16, and that came against Key High. Bounce to Wolf. 
Has it in the wing right side, takes it left, and now down to Boozman, down to the corner with Wangsness. And South Wind goes for the steal. A tie-up is called, and they have the possession arrow. Clock keeps running here. Running clock rule in effect. Five minutes to go here in the third quarter. And a 45-8 AP lead. Lose a little bit of the focus, don't you, John, going into halftime. It's amazing yeah. what a halftime break will do for both teams, honestly. Hudson leads Jessup 40 to 38 halfway through the third quarter. Looks like Eddie almost got a steal. And there's going to be travel in the lane. Really good D by Ava, forcing her into the lane and then not letting her go up. So, see the Falcons can run their offense, get Olivia Peterson a shot down at the block. So, South wind switched to a zone defense, which should actually help the Falcons out. Eddie, three ball to the right corner, air ball long. Rebound goes to Wendell. She sprints down the far sideline here for South Winnesheek. Almost traveled, she's pivoting around and throws an underhand pass forward to a teammate Holthouse. Down to the baseline and... Uh, I didn't see a call, it was uh, gonna be... It, it's South wind ball. South wind ball. Bella hit it out of 22's hand. All right. Holthouse. Down to the wing right side. Tip shot from, by, uh, from uh, Wentold, and the rebound goes to AP with Wangsness. Down to Ava Eddy, long two, right wing. Yes! Nice shot it. by Ava, good break. Next broadcast of Falcon Hoops will be this coming Thursday night when AP hosts Dyke New Hartford in boys basketball district semifinal action. And we got another whistle down at the other side. Clock continues to run, 3.25 to go in the third quarter. So that'll be Thursday night. That'll be the second time in three years that those two teams will meet in the district semifinals here in the AP gym. Went hold inbounds from the corner right side to Willie. Now it's Holthouse up top, line drive pass. Here comes a corner three ball, good. There's Went hold again, starting to knock him down. That's her second three of the game. 47-11 is the AP lead. Eddie brings it up top, bounces it left to Boozman. Thought about taking the shot. Down low for Peterson, turn it around. Boozman. Oh, had a three ball tip. There's Wangsness, Wangsness to pick again. it up and put it back in. And man, Kobe Wangsness Boy, got she... in the right place at the right time there. Yeah, uh, twice she's been in the right place at the right time. Starter's gonna check into the next dead ball for AP. Two and a half to go in the third quarter. Down to the baseline, here's a kick to the corner, and out of bounds, back to AP. Yeah, what do you think about that game coming up this Thursday night, 48 hours from now, AP, D, and H getting back together here for the third time this season? Well, it was a heck of a ball game last night down in Dyke with yeah. uh, Colin Meester scoring with literally no time on yeah. the clock, <laughs> going down the stretch, score lap to beat Clarion Goldfield out. That was a really good ball game going back and forth. Oof. Kendall Ryard kind of swivels the elbows, takes her defender to the floor. Uh, so I think the Falcons beat the Wolverines by 10 the last time we played. Is that the correct statement, I believe, boys? Uh, yes. That was here, so it'll, uh, it's hard to tell with a rivalry game like that, John. You just right. never know. Inbound to Schultz in the corner. Fires up a three ball. Oh, and gets wedged between the backboard and ring. Jump ball, <laughs> south wind ball. All right. They're like, how do we get this thing down? <laughs> Someone got a like a broom handle or something. I think they'll get another basketball. Uh oh, oh we got Jackson. Oh, he, he lodged it up even further. Oh no, he, now he can't get it. There it is. Who was that again? Jack uh, Cottrell. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, minute 32 left in the third. Falcons inbound. And they turn it over, Quinlan Schultz. Looks like she had the heels out of bounds, potentially. Well, there's some cheap entertainment right there as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Free popcorn for Mr. Cottrell <laughs> after that. And to the front court comes Wendhold down to the corner left side. Down a minute 12 left in the third. Holthouse spins around, gets it into the lane, and a shot is missed. Tapped around. Holthouse the rebound and backs it back out here. Three ball missed. Another rebound to Holthouse and lost out of bounds to AP. So yeah, AP DNH boys round three this Thursday night. Last time they met of the postseason was a low scoring affair. That was Greg Moore's last game of his coaching career. 
here a couple years ago. He really did a nice job. I mean, that's the, uh, I hate to say that's the only chance. That's one of the best chances he put his kids in a position to score or win uh, was that night. Mm -hmm. And it was, you and I called the game, John. It was wild. It yeah. was. <laughs> I would say was it was 42-38, if I remember the score, yeah, pretty it was, close. It was very, yeah, I know the losing team had less than 40, so here's a shot up and in by South Wind. I was screened off by the referee. That was Wenthold. That was Wenthold. Ten seconds left in the third. Walker heaves it left. Here comes a three ball, Oswegen. Nice yep. shot by Lex. Oswegen puts it in, 54-13. South Wind gets to half court. No opportunity for a shot, and that is it for the third quarter. Applings and Parkersburg, 54, South Winnishik, 13. Let's go to the fourth quarter. Tired of uneven tire wear and wonky steering, draining your wallet at fancy dealerships? At Parkersburg Tire and Alignment, we get it. We're a family-owned business keeping your car safe and your wallet happy. We use the latest technology, not fancy price tags. Our expert mechanics get you back on the road fast with honest advice and budget-friendly options. New tires? We've got major brands at down-to-earth prices. Alignment off? Our precision machines get you rolling straight, saving you money on gas and tires. Skip the big guys. Parkersburg Tire and Alignment, where family values meet the latest tech, all at prices that won't steer you wrong. Stop up or call and talk to Dave about your car needs at 1304 Highway 57 Parkersburg or 319-346-2000. We are more than just a tire store. It's time for the fourth quarter inside the AP Gym. Falcons 54, South Winnesheek 13. Quinlan Schultz, Scott Steele missed the bucket. And it's going to be out of bounds to AP as we get rolling here in the fourth quarter. Running clock rule continues to be in effect. 54-13 is the AP lead. Hudson leads Jessup 49-47, end of the third quarter. Walker's got it top of the key for the Falcons. Here comes a three ball, Ryer missed off the rim. Rebound, Warriors. So AP will face the Hudson Jessup winner. This Friday night here inside the AP Gym, right here on 99 The Wave. I think that one is going to be a game, John. Oh, yeah. This place is going to be rocking just based on. We've traveled by South Wind, by the way. Yep, just based on. It, it's going to be a good game. The reason I think it's going to be a good game, depending on who wins between those two, Hudson and AP went overtime first game. Yeah. Second game was really close. Jessup, I think, is is a ticking time bomb. I think if they get really hot, it could be tough for the Falcons. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's going to be, regardless, it's going to be a rematch. Three ball Schultz, missed it. Rebound goes to South Wind, goes to Winings. Yeah, AP 3-0 against uh, those teams on the season as of now. So we'll see if the Falcons are able to continue that this coming Friday night, 7 o'clock p.m. tip-off. Here's a steal by Ryard. Open path to the bucket, fast break layup, missed it. Rebound Schultz, crowd going back up. There's Oswegen, open on the other side of the lane and she hits the two. And Lexi Oswegen is the first Falcon into double figures with 10. Amid the basketball, we got state wrestling going on this week. APGC, five state qualifiers, a block by Oswegen. Here come the Falcons in transition. Four to Quinlan Schultz, down to the lane, heaves it up and missed it, but a foul call. So I will be down at Wells Fargo Arena, ooh, bright and early tomorrow morning. I'll have to sleep quick. Well, but, I'm excited for our kids. Mason oh yeah. Cobb, Jesse Brower, Kate Rice, Liston and the boys. That's gonna be, I'm just really excited for them to have the opportunity to go down yeah. and perform in that venue, John, with all those people. It's just madhouse, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Schultz to the line, first free throw miss. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get a whole lot better than the Iowa State Wrestling Tournament when it comes to atmosphere, the fans. You pack 17,000 people into that place from all schools in Iowa. Abs, it's yeah. like, it's, it, uh, the equivalent would be like going to the state track meet where you have every school there, but it's just, yeah. And 
you know as well as I do that uh, wrestlers really get into the sport. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saying it nicely, I mean, yeah. there's some people that are wild down there. Oh, for sure. So coverage will start about 9 o'clock a.m. tomorrow. Here's a steal by Wolf. And the Falcons will slow this one down. Yeah, two-way session is 9 a.m. to about 12.30. There's old Pete. She puts it up and no nope. good. Rebound south win. Then we'll have a break for the afternoon session for class 3A. Class 1A will be the night session, 6 to 9 p.m. Actually, 6 to 9.30 p.m. Top of the key here is Conway. The referee the left. likes to stand right in front <laughs> of us, doesn't he? Holthouse knocks down the shot. That is her first field goal. 57-15 AP, 5.08 to go here in the Really nice quarter. pass by Olivia Peterson out to Emma. Falcons do a nice job of working the ball. Just keep passing around. Wolf, right wing three. Bouncing on the rim, no. Rebound Peterson. Um, it gets it back out to Wolf for three ball. Yeah, Emma Wolf. Wolf from downtown, and it, the Falcons continue to pour it on here over South Wind with 4.40 to go in the fourth quarter. Looks like this thing will get done just after the clock hits 8 o'clock. Continues to run here with four and a half minutes to go. 60 to 15 AP. And here's an interesting thing as well, as Tease tries backing it in, they get it back up top. So last two years when this team played here in the playoffs, one of the uh, one of the Falcons, Ellen Waller, in fact, had 30 plus in both those games. Right now the leading score is 10, but the Falcons are just as dominant. Here's a steal by Wangsman, she takes it down the lane and missed the shot, but a foul was called. Yeah, 2020 last year, Falcons won 72 37. Yeah. And 21 22, which was two years ago, it was 80 to 21. So we're probably on the same type of trajectory. Yeah. Wangs has missed the free throw. End of the third quarter, Dyke New Hartford leads Waterloo Columbus 64 24. Wolverines will play uh, the winner of MFL Marmac and Sumner Fredericksburg. Second free throw also missed. Rebound tapped around and it goes to South Win. There's a whistle. And it's going to be a foul on AP, it appears. Let's see if we can get an update on that Sumner and MFL game. Let's see. Going into the fourth quarter, Sumner Fred leads MFL Marmac 34-31. That's a good game. Sumner Fredericksburg, but we played them way early up in, up in Sumner. Here's a steal by Wolf to the rack. Hit the bottom of the backboard. And the Falcons get the offense. Well, maybe get the offensive board. Peterson scrambling for it. Now it's Eddie on the floor. And finally, a whistle is blown. <laughs> but yeah, Bell Elliott and company. It looked oh. like a fumble in football. Nobody could grab the oblong thing, but <laughs> yeah. they... Uh, we're able to grab it. Yeah. And that's her fifth foul. But yeah, Sumner Fredericksburg, a nice team. Willie's, looking... Willie's fifth foul, John. All right. So it's looking pretty well. If Sumner's able to finish the job, then it'll be uh, all four NICL teams in the regional semifinals of this bracket. Estelle, I think her name was Elliot. Is that true? That Bill Elliot, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the really post. a good, well, I think she's going to UNI to play volleyball. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. So she's a phenomenal athlete and a great volleyball player, but she's a really good basketball player as well. Yes, so. sir. Warriors get a steal shortly after the inbounds pass here with two and a half minutes to play. Now Jessup has come back and taken a lead over Hudson. Here comes Wangsness the other way. Someone tripped over the ball, and Eddie is fouled as she tried going up with it. So she'll shoot free throws. 56-53, Jessup leads, 5.08 left in the fourth. Again, the Falcons will host the winner of that one, and now the bench players are going to start to come into the game after these Eddie free throws. First one, good. All right, so Emma Hahn is coming in. Emma Hahn, Kiera Morris. Kiera Morris, yep. Julia Mostek, Adri Allen. Second free throw missed by Eddie, rebound Warriors. 
I don't think she did it on purpose, but now Ava gets to play with these guys a little bit. <laughs> and Peyton Osterkamp is waiting to come in. She'll get in there now. All right. There was a foul call called. Some serious contact. One of the players lost her shoe somehow. Well, she <laughs> was going for a layup. Julia Mostek was going to try to defend her, stepped on the back of her heel. Uh. Yep, and there <laughs> went the shoe. Yep. So she's just going to shoot free throws and got to wait for her to tie the shoe, and now we're ready to go. Well, Southwind will have their season come to a close at 7 and 16. First free throw, good. Switch. Peyton Osterkamp for Ava Eddy. Well, she had a nice game tonight, John. Yes, sir. Did she end up with 10 ish? Ava Eddy, I had her for eight points. Eight points, yep. yep. And the student section counting out the dribbles. Second free throw missed. Tap back to the Falcons here with Hahn. She takes it forward. Tries back it in, throws back up top, and it's picked and stolen away by Southwind. Here comes uh, Ryan down the other way. She scooped it up and in for two. 61-18, Ryan gets her first bucket of the game. Han down the other way, pivots around. Down to Osterkamp at the corner. With a minute 39 left. We will also have our annual Meet the State Wrestlers show coming up at 9 o'clock tonight on 99 The Wave. So listen to hear interviews from area wrestlers. All right, here comes Southwind with a buck 20 to go. 61-18 AP. Warriors bounce it down toward the baseline. Ryan works it down there. Here's Wenthold. You know, it doesn't happen a lot, John, that you're able to get your whole bench in during the tournament. Right. So it's, it's really, it's a fun atmosphere to be a part of. You know, I'm looking at freshmen, some sophomores out there, but it's just kind of fun to be able to play in the tournament game because, oh, yeah. you know, the, as you look down the road, the chance of being able to empty your bench against Hudson or Jessup is probably pretty slim. Right. And then being able to to drain your bench against Dyke is not going to happen. Not going to happen <laughs> unless you're on the opposite end, which you don't want to be. Second free throw good. And last year, all the kids got to play in the state tournament, which that's is right. great. And everybody that's ever put on a uniform in Iowa, boy or girls, wanted to play the state tournament. And to say you played, you can always tell your kids and grandkids whether you played one minute or 20, I played in the state tournament. Yep. Loose ball on the floor. It's scooped up. Down to the left side of the cor left side corner to Han as out of bounds. End of the third quarter. AGWSR leads BCLUW 49 to 28. Cougars heading toward a likely trip to Newell Fonda this Friday night, who's ranked number two in class one. That will, that will not be an easy opponent there. No. Here's a hook shot by Ryan, puts it in. That's who they played in the regional final last year. Fell a game shy of state. 10 seconds left in the game, and AP can dribble this out if they choose. Han into the front court. Hands it off. Mostek throws it into the lane, stolen by the Warriors, and that's it. 61 to 22. Appleton Parkersburg has absolutely no problems with South Winnesheek here in their postseason opener. Falcons head to Friday night's regional semifinal. They will host either Jessup or Hudson. Postgame coverage is next. 